Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Pastor Lee. You will not find any videos of myself during these lectures. Why? Because it is not about me, but the focus should be on the gospel. We hope that you had a good week, and I hope you are wearing your mask and social distancing during this crisis. Once again, we thank you for tuning in to the Pastor.Faith YouTube channel. We are bringing you messages using the manuscripts which were the original writings and interpretation into the King James Bible. This will give each and every one of us a clear view and understanding of the Bible which was created with the wisdom of God to teach with clarity and understanding, not to confuse. As we look at the book of James chapter one, verse five through six, it teaches us if any lack wisdom, let him ask of the Lord who giveth to all men and women freely. So go with us now into another lecture where some are recorded live and some come directly from the desk of the pastor. Come follow us with your Bibles as we follow Christ. The title of this uh, sermon today is The Lord is My Helper in 2021. The Lord is My Helper in 2021. Now here's the theme. Can you cut it? There are some people, and I will let you know ahead of time, I was one of those people that I signed up to run the race for the full year, but yet in the midst of signing up, I was looking for excuses not to make it. It's so easy to tell somebody, yeah, I get it, yeah, I understand, but yeah, but because of this, this and that, I just, you know, just kind of took a back seat. It's just too much for me. I just can't do it. But if we invest and put in, in energies, God will make a way and reveal to us what we need to know to become better people than what we have become. Now, we're going we're gonna to jump into this real quick just uh, to remind all of us who we are, where we came from, and what God knows about us and expects of us. As we look at Ephesians chapter 1, it said, verse 3, Blessed be the God of our fathers, of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heaven places in heavenly places in Christ. This is a Paul writes to the church of Ephesus, reminding them who they are and who we should be in Christ Jesus. Verse 4, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundations of the world. Christ has chosen us. It, in him before we came in as in fleshly bodies and this is the first earth age that we should be holy without blame before him in love verse 5 having predestinated us God predestinated us into the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will so it's a adoption because we weren't born as the chosen people the Jewish people we weren't born but we were adopted into that family through Christ Jesus we were adopted and the predestination lies within us as God looked upon all of us and knew who we were when we were in heaven in the first earth age. Now, as we look at predestination, predestination is pre 
determined. Predetermination that describes the actions and motives of God prior to his creation of this world, which is fleshly bodies. Now, the first earth age, when he predestinated some people to receive salvation, to elect, to the elect, and the rest he left to continue in their sins. And that was back when we were in spiritual bodies, not fleshly bodies. He knew who was and he knew who wasn't. And all of this is based on, listen, Lucifer going bad in the first uh, earth age and contaminating two-thirds of God's creation. The other third, he knows them not by choice, but by calling us who we are, the defenders of God. We, the third that... We fought against Satan in the first earth age, and even Satan today knows who we are. You didn't, you didn't think about that, did you? He knows who we are. He knows we, he knows we went up against him when he tried to overthrow heaven. We went up against him. We're the third. We're the, we're the chosen. We're the, we're the elect. We're the ones that were predestinated to come down on this earth and to do what God has called us to do. It's not that God selected us. Oh, I just like them better than them or nothing. No, it's what we did in the first earth age. We stood before Satan and we fought against him. Where, where the others, many of the others just joined right in with his little game. And then there was a percentage of them that didn't even care, just stood back and watched it all go down. But we are the ones. We are the ones. Say that, we are the ones. We are the ones. Now, we're going we're gonna to bring this in, and God calls Jeremiah, and this is all linked together, as the first earth age for God knowing who's predestinated and who's called. Listen to this. Now, this is Jeremiah writing, Chapter 1, verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, listen to this, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou cameth forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. God knows us all. He knows what our deficiencies are, and he knows what our attributes are. He doesn't miss anything. And you may ask your question, why am I living in Peru? You're living here for a reason. I ask, if I ask, why am I living in uh, 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 Pittsville? Start off in Pennsylvania, now I'm here in Pittsville, traveled around everything else. I'm here for a reason, not a season. And God knows the reason. God has uh, uh, lives and hearts for us to touch. And Jeremiah says, in, and let me finish that. Uh, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. We have a mission in Peru, we have a mission in Pittsfield. We have a permission, a, per, a permission, uh, a premonition for and from for where we're going and what we're to accomplish. And then said I, Jeremiah, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Here he goes making excuses. Okay, he accepted that God called him. He accepted that that God sanctified him. He accepted all that. Who does that remind you of in the Bible? Have any clue? No, the same words were uttered, exact same words by Moses. When God called Moses, said, I can't speak. So what did God do? God said, there's your brother Aaron. He's rambunctious and he's full of energy. He'll talk for you. You just do my will. And in verse 7, God speaks to Jeremiah and, 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 and this is what he writes. But the Lord said unto me, say not, I am 
a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. And, and what was God saying? This is uh, your pre uh, predestination, your earthly mission, to be here and to speak. In verse 8, Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. And you know what? You and I have to get to the point where we know that God is with us. I say in the mornings, Lord, speak to me to speak to others what you want me to say, not what I think I ought to say, because you know what their hearts need. And a lot of you, just like me, have, have friends and uh, acquaintances, associates that you speak with in this community. And God can speak a word to you that will encourage them and influence them. I, as I said last week, you don't have to preach a sermon. Just say the words that God leads you to say, which will inspire them. And this, look, this is what the Lord will do for you when you put it in his hands. It's what we talked about earlier. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. What, what, are, what is he saying here that can be applied to us? Pray it, ask it, believe it, and receive it. Simple as that. But you know, you've got to read the Word of God accordingly. Back then, they had the scrolls that they could read that was written by other prophets, and they prayed for understanding of them, that they could understand things a little bit more clear. Verse 10, Jeremiah 1.10, See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to put down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to and to plant now this verse can pertain to you and i as for you and i this is to spread the gospel in this day and time spread the gospel how god leads us everyone say how god leads us now as we move over now for another good example of this and 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 don't uh don't get too far ahead the lord is my helper in 2021 can you cut it psalms chapter 118 verse 5 i call up this is david talking i called upon the lord this is what i'm trying to say whatever goals you have for 2021 david says i called upon the lord in distress and the Lord answered me and set me in a large place. Verse 6, the Lord is on my side. You got to know that whatever situation you're, going, you're in, whatever situation you're going to come about, the Lord is on your side. And not everyone understands that. And he says, and, and uh, David said, I will not fear what can man do unto me we we, we got to remember man is not greater than god god is greater than man and god can make him bow to you at any time verse 7 the lord taketh my part with them that help me therefore shall i see my desire upon them that hate me and what is, what, what is this uh, verse saying? God said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Don't try to take things into your own hand. I'm going to get back at that person. Oh my great, I'm not putting up with this. God, And it's hard. I'm going to stand here and tell you, it's hard. When you know people has a vendetta against you to say, I'm going into prayer and I'm going to give it to God. When you see the world takes things into their own hands. But that's the God we serve. We're protected, we're led, we're guided, and vengeance is the Lord's. Psalms 118a, 8. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. We should not desire his way of thinking. We should not desire to get advice for those from those that don't know the Lord. Because if they don't know the Lord, they're not going to give you godly advice. 
Psalms 27 verse 4. One thing have I desired of the Lord, David says, that will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Now, what is David saying? Not the glory of man or this earth, but can you cut it? I can cut it. And our end goal is to be in the presence of God when we leave this earth. When we let these bodies go, the Spirit goes back to the giver, which is God Almighty. And we want to make sure we're on the right side. David says, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. What's his pavilion? Shelter. Protection. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me, and he shall set me upon a rock. Just remember, God is always around us. And this is all about, when when I say the words, can you cut it? This is all about you submitting yourself to God and knowing that he's got this. He's got it. All I got to do is make my requests known unto the Lord, as the word of God says, and God's got it. Verse 6. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies, round about me. And therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I'm rejoicing. I'm not rejoicing on what I see, but I'm rejoicing that my faith, my love, my commitment is in the Lord. And I will sing. Yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. And you know something, brothers and sisters, sometimes it's hard for us to get a song up to get joyful when things are not looking great for us. But if we can just look back and see where God brought us from, we know there's no failure in his hand. There's none. And he too, at the right time, will bring us out, will deliver us, and set us free, even in 2021. Verse 7, Hear, O Lord, When I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. That's trust in him. Verse 8. When thou sayest, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hallelujah. In the time of trouble, I'm going to seek your face. I'm going to be all over you, Lord, with, with what I, my needs that I need. And I'm going to be all over you to give you praise and honor and know that you got this. So David is clarifying here. The Lord is my helper. And I can cut it. And to everyone that's here. The Lord is your helper and you can cut it and you can cut it only because your faith, your trust is in the Lord and you know your help cometh from the Lord. Amen. Father, we thank you today for this sermon here and and we just need to be reminded every day, every day, Lord that you are our helper. And even when we're starting 2021 with all the pandemic that's going on, we need to remember our trust is not in man, our trust is not in the vaccine, but our trust is in you. Because you're the one that gives them the wisdom and knowledge to come up with a solution. You are. And man ought to praise you, Lord, for your ambition in trying to rescue each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us on the pastor.com YouTube channel. We encourage you to continue to have a conversation with God on a daily basis. Not many people take the time out of their schedule to do so. Again, this ministry encourages everyone of, um, of importance to receive Jesus Christ into their life as Lord and Savior. 
You may ask, how do I receive him? Just talk to him, confessing to him as being a sinner and realizing how much you need him and ask Jesus into your heart, which is your mind. And in doing so, we have an advocate with the Father, that when we repent and ask for forgiveness for any of our sins that we all commit regularly, God is justified to forgive us of our sins. One of the most challenging moments that we all will face is accepting his forgiveness and receiving it. But let me tell you, practice makes perfect. We may not feel comfortable the first time around, but as we keep receiving him and his forgiveness, it'll it, it be like um, nature. And knowing that someone loves you as deeply as God Almighty. He himself has proven that by bringing his only begotten son into the world to die on the cross of Calvary, to absorb all of the sins that we all have committed and yet have the power to forgive us. So keep that in mind. We love you and we look forward to having you join us doing our next lecture. God bless you. Till next time. Soon as I stopped worrying Worrying how the story ain't I let go and I let God I let God have his way That's when things start happening When I stop looking at back then When I let go and I let God I let God have his way mm -hmm. I couldn't seem to fall asleep There was so much on my mind Searching for that peace But the peace I could not find Oh, but then I, I kneeled down to pray I was praying, help me please he said you don't have to cry Cause I'll supply all your needs Soon as I stop worrying Worrying how the story is When I let go and I let God Let God and His way That's Let go. Oh, let go. Let go. And just let God. Let go. Oh, let go. 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 Let go